Hey guys, what's up? This is AJ of Bridging Code, and for this tutorial, we're going to explore how to integrate with ActiveMQ using Spring Boot. So, for those who aren't that much familiar with what Apache ActiveMQ is, it is just one of the many brands of message brokers out there, including the open source ones like RabbitMQ and Apache Kafka, or the more enterprisey ones like IBM MQ and Tibco. If you don't know what a message broker is, it is an intermediary platform or a middleware that handles exchange of formally defined messages between two or more queues. So ActiveMQ is open source. It is based in Java. It is an implementation of the Java Messaging Service or JMS. And it supports a variety of transport protocols like REST, AMQP, WebSockets, and many more. So why should you consider using ActiveMQ? If you need transactional messaging, it is probably one of your best options. It has a very extensive support to XA transactions. It has a built-in transaction manager or transaction store, as you may call it, to handle the messages and cache them until they are committed or rolled back. ActiveMQ also maintains the delivery state of every message resulting in lower throughput. If you need clustering and asynchronous messaging for low latency and speed, ActiveMQ is also the solution for you. And for when you want to stream data, preferably in real time, for example, plane seats when purchasing tickets, chat conversations, news, stock prices, you can also make use of ActiveMQ for this requirement. So for this tutorial, we will build a Spring Boot app with a publisher that publishes messages to the queue by um, making a post request with the message being in JSON and a consumer that will listen to the queue in the message broker, which is ActiveMQ, and um, receive the published messages. We will configure uh, to start off with several consumers and have it scale out automatically to the maximum number of consumers as necessary, which we will also configure. Now, before we start working on the code, make sure you already have ActiveMQ installed on your machine or a server that you intend to connect to. If you don't have it installed yet, I have pasted the download link and instructions to installing Apache ActiveMQ in the description below. If you have it installed already, we need to start it if it hasn't been started yet with the ActiveMQ start command. And once you have started ActiveMQ, um, you should be able to see the homepage by logging in to 127.0.0.1, port 8161, and type in the default username and password, which is both admin. If you want to change your username and password later on, feel free to do so. Next is we head over to queues and create a new queue where we will publish our messages and listen to it for any new published message. In my case, I will create a queue called bridging code dash queue. Once your queue is created, you should be able to see it in this table with the number of pending transactions, pending or sorry, number of pending messages, which are the messages that have not yet been consumed or acknowledged. The number of consumers, which is obviously still zero since we haven't created the app to listen to this to this queue yet. The um, enqueued counter, which is the number of messages that have been published to the queue since the server started. And the queued the counter, which is the number of messages that were acknowledged and or deleted from the queue since the server started. So I have prepared the bear classes that we will be working on. 
I have created a JMS config, config class where we will put any JMS or ActiveMQ related configurations later on. We also have a published controller which will be a RESTful controller that we'll use, we will use to trigger the sending or publishing of a message to an active MQQ via a POST request. Next is we have the message consumer class which will listen to the queue for any messages published through the publish controller and um, I have also created a system message class which will be the object that we will send over to the queue for the consumer to receive. I have impl implemented it as serializable so that I don't have to override the default message converter being auto-configured to us by Spring Boot. For our Maven dependencies, um, uh, of course, you will need the Spring Boot Star ActiveMQ dependency for our Spring Boot app to work with ActiveMQ and have most of the JMS stuff auto-configured like Connection Factory and Message Converter. Now, the only reason that I have included the Spring Boot Star web dependency is because we will define a RESTful endpoint to trigger our publisher to publish a message to ActiveMQ, but in reality, a system or app could publish a message on a scheduled basis, or it could also be listening to another queue, process that message it received, and set it over to another queue for another consumer or system to receive. Keep in mind that this will be a very simple project for demonstration purposes only. Normally, you would see these publish and consumer packages in a completely separate app or system or network, which could be from entirely different domains in production. But for the purposes of this tutorial, they will just be in the same Springwood app project. So first off, I will annotate this JMS config class with app configuration to let Spring know that this is a configuration class and at enable JMS to enable JMS features and configurations like creating the message listener container. Next is we will define the default JMS listener container factory bean to create a default message listener container. So what I did here is to create an instance of the default JMS listener container factory where I set the connection factory, sorry, set, set where I set the connection factory to the auto configured connection factory, which uses caching connection factory by default to cache your connection with the message broker which is our active MQ. If you have a requirement for um, connection pooling, you would need, need a separate active MQ dependency called active MQ JMS pool and define your own connection factory bean, which is the pooled connection factory. But for this tutorial, we won't be pulling our connections. I also set the concurrency to a minimum of five consumers meaning it will initially create five consumers and automatically scale out to a maximum of 10 consumers as necessary for a concurrent and asynchronous receiving of messages. Normally in production, this would probably be a larger number, say around 100 or more.
Now, as part of the configurations, we will set the broker URL here in the application dash, dash properties file. which is uh, um, TCP column local host port 61616. By default, um, you may elect to change the port if you wish to. Then the um, username to admin and the password to admin as well. Now I will conf I will set the packages a dot trust dash all to true so um, that the message converter that spring auto configured by default would convert and serialize the um, system message class that I created and it will not give me an exception later saying that it doesn't trust the, this type this is very optional um, and you don't have to set this property. It's 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 just that I didn't want to define my own message converter beam to keep things simpler. And the only way for me to do that to have the default message converter accept uh, the message object that I create created, which is a system message, is to um, for me to have it uh, serializable for our consumer. Um, um, we will annotate this message cons consumer class with add component um, uh, and uh, we will also define a logger to log the message we receive from the queue. Next is I will implement a listener method to listen to the queue for any messages and log that message. Now I have to annotate Sorry, I have to annotate this method with at JMS listener uh, to tell Spring that Spring JMS that this is a listener method and set the uh, destination queue or the queue to uh, the one we created earlier, which is uh, bridging code dash queue. So. Um, this consumer will listen to this queue. Now, keep in mind that uh, this annotation will not work if we didn't enable JMS for Spring, which is through the at enable JMS annotation we did here in our uh, JMS config class. Um, now, we uh, head over to publish controller and um, annotate this uh, class with at rest controller to let Spring know that this is a restful controller. Um, inject inject the uh, JMS template B which is a helper class for um, sending and receiving messages 
And now we define a post method that will trigger publishing of messages to our queue. So basically what I did here is to just convert the message. Um, depending on how you define your own message converter, it could be a JSON string or XML string. But for my case, I just relied on the um, message converter configured by Spring for me by default, which is a simple message converter that converts my message into an object message. And then um, set it over to the queue in our message broker, which is bridging code dash queue. So now we build the Spring Boot app. And let's head over to Postman and submit a post request with the following message body. So for the source, let's let's just um, put another system or another external system. And for the message, um, what? Uh, let's pretend that this app is just publishing messages and publishing pu or sorry publishing events to a queue which is another common use case for using message brokers. So uh, let's say, let's, let's set it this to transaction started. And let's submit this request. It appears that I have configured the broker URL incorrectly. Let's head over to um, application properties and correct this. 61616, the default port number for ActiveMQ is uh, port 61616. And again, you may elect to uh, change that port later. So let's submit this again. Okay. Status of 200 and it is sent. And if we head over to our IDE, as you can see, uh, our consumer was able to receive the message that we just published. And if we um, publish a few more messages by submitting a few more post requests, As you can see, um, it was able to receive all the messages because it is constantly listening to the queue we are publishing to, which is the bridging code dash queue. And if we head over to, to the homepage of ActiveMQ, uh, as you can see in this table here in the ActiveMQ uh, user interface, the the number of messages uh, that we published over to our queue is also reflected. And the number of consumers, uh, uh, we have five consumers because um, we set the minimum number, of uh, minimum number to five consumers and this will automatically scale out to a maximum of 10 consumers because we configured it to do so. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. 
and I will do my best to answer all of them. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye!